So then before we get started actually making a GraphQL server that can handle all of our queries, I wanted to go over the basics of this query language right here and show you how we typically structure these queries from the front end. Now to do this, we're going to be using Apollo Explorer, which I showed you briefly in the first video of the series. And Apollo Explorer is a way for us to send test queries to a GraphQL server and see the responses that we get back from it. Now you might have worked with something called Postman before, which is for REST APIs, and it's basically a GraphQL version of Postman, what we're using here. It allows us to test and send queries as we would from a front-end application without having to actually build a front-end. So the way we're going to be making and sending queries from here is essentially the same way we'd be sending them from a client-side application like a React app, for example. So this window right here is where we're going to be making the queries. And then to send them, we'd press this button right here. And the response from the server is going to show over on the right. Now for this lesson, I'm connecting Apollo Explorer to a backend GraphQL server I've already made. And it's the one that we're going to be making through the rest of this series. But you can also use something called the Apollo Sandbox, which you can find on the Apollo Docs right here. I'm going to leave this link down below. And when you open the Sandbox, it connects to a dummy GraphQL server so you can play around with requests without having to worry about making a server yourself. But for now, I'm going to go back to the Explorer connected to my own GraphQL server because that's more pertinent to the rest of this course that we're doing. So then how do we make a query using GraphQL? Well, first off, we'd use this word query. And then after that, we can give our query a name if we want to. For example, I'm calling this one reviews query because I'm going to be fetching reviews from the server. Makes sense, right? So you can call this whatever you want. Then we open the curly braces and inside these, we specify what data resource we want to get back. Now, a GraphQL server can expose multiple different resources to the clients. For example, they might expose the reviews resource, an author's resource, a user's resource, a games resource, etc. And we can specify any of those resources right here as our entry points for the query. So right now, we're saying we want to jump into the graph on this resource entry point. In essence, we want to fetch the reviews data to begin with. Now, on its own, that's not going to do much for us because although we've said we want to get the reviews data, we've not specified which fields from each review that we want to retrieve. Now, this is one of the major differences between GraphQL and using a REST API because when we send a request for a resource to a REST API endpoint, we don't then specify which parts of that resource we want to get back. We just get the whole lot back. But in GraphQL, we can manually choose which fields from this resource that we want to fetch. And the way we do that is by opening curly braces again and then writing down whatever fields we want. So I could just say, get me the rating field of each review. And if I press send now, I'll see the response is a bunch of review objects, each one with just the rating field. Awesome. Now, if I want more fields, I can just list them inside these curly braces right here. So I could say that I want the content of each review and also the ID of each review as well. And now if I hit send, you're going to see this time I get back all of those fields in each review object. So this is a really cool feature of GraphQL, only getting back the fields from the data that we actually need. Now, before we go any further, I want to just jump to some slides to quickly explain from a bird's eye perspective how we query the graph and move around it to navigate data. So when we make a GraphQL server or API, we're making something called a graph, right? And a graph in visual terms is basically a bunch of connected data that looks something like this. So in this case, we've got three different data types. We've got reviews, authors, and games. And we can choose to jump into the graph at any point that's exposed to us by the server when we make a query. And from there, the GraphQL layer allows us to traverse or walk through this graph to also fetch any related data to that starting point, right? So. We just made a simple query whereby we requested all of the reviews data and specified which fields we wanted back for each review, right? So the reviews resource was our jumping in points. We landed right there. And from there, I could say, okay, also get me the author of each review that I got back. And I could also specify which fields of the authors that I want to get back as well. And the query would look something like this. And the reason I could do this is because when I made the GraphQL server, I connected these data resources. I said that each review was related to an author who 
who wrote that review. And the author is a separate resource. And all of this data would be brought back from a single request. We've only made one query and sent that one query to the server. We didn't have to first get the reviews and then make a second request for the authors of each of those reviews, even though it's a separate resource that we're getting right here. Another example could be that my initial entry point to the graph would be a specific game with a certain ID. And the query for that would look something like this, where we specify the ID of the game that we want as a variable. Now, we'll learn more about query variables later on, so don't worry too much about that for now. But then, having jumped in at this point on that game, I could also say, get me any review related to that game. And from those reviews, just get me the rating field. And to take it one step further, I could also say then, get me the author of each of those reviews and just give me their name. So you can see how this general idea of a graph allows us to initially jump in somewhere and then navigate between related data and fetch it all in a single query. And that is the crux of GraphQL. So let's try one of these queries with nested related data again in Apollo Explorer. All right, so we saw before that we had this reviews query where we fetched all the reviews and we got the rating content and ID for each one. So we got those back, right? But now we can also get nested content. So say for example, I want the author of each review. Now this author is actually a separate resource. So they don't have author properties, these reviews. They're a separate resource, but they're linked to reviews. So the related data, and we've specified that, or I've specified that in the GraphQL server. We'll see how to do that later on, but let me just show you how we can fetch this stuff now. So from the author, I could get the name and the ID of the author. We also have a verified property to say whether they're a verified author. Now, if I click on this, we're gonna get all of the same stuff here, plus the author details. So it's grabbing that as well for each different review. Now we could also get the game associated with each review. So down here, I could say game, and then inside parentheses or rather curly braces, we can say which properties we want back for the game. So I could say the title of the game, the price of the game, and also the platform of the game. And it looks here like we don't actually have a price property. So let me get rid of that. I mustn't have added that. So let me just leave it with the title and platform. Press that and we can see now we get the title of each game and the platform of each game as well, which is an array of different platforms. So these are three separate resources, author, game and reviews, but we're getting them all back from the same query. And we can take this one step further if we wanted to. We could say, okay, well, get me all the reviews now associated with each author, for example. So let's do it right here. We can say we want the reviews from each author. And from that, we just want the rating and we want the ID of each review. Click on that. And now you can see nested inside the author, we can see the other reviews that they've done. And again, we can take this one step further. We can say we also want the game for each one and we want the title for each one. Now this is getting a bit complex. I probably wouldn't make a query this complex. I just wanted to show you how we can work with this related nested data. All right, and how flexible it is. That's really cool, isn't it? All in one query. So like I said before, we can also have mutations to add new games if we want to, delete games or reviews, whatever it might be, to update different records. So we're gonna see all of that later on as well. So now hopefully you can understand a little bit more about how these queries are made and how we can fetch related data within a single query. Now, there is much more to GraphQL than making queries like this, but for now, I think that's probably enough to get us started. I just wanted to make sure we all have a little bit of an understanding of this general syntax. So in the next lesson, we're going to start making our very own GraphQL server on the back end.